The Wii was and still is a popular game console, released in 2006 with more than 100 million units sold. It's a beefed up GameCube with revolutionary motion controllers added. The Wii was never considered as a powerful console. I mean, the Wii has 88 megabytes of RAM in comparison to the PlayStation 3 has 256 megabytes of RAM and today even your fridge has more RAM than this beast if you buy one for $3,000 ish. The CPU is a PowerPC G3750CL, clocked at 729 MHz. And yes, the iMac G3 released in 1998 has a similar processor. For drawing pictures, there's the ATI Hollywood GPU based on ATI's 90nm R500 architecture, clocked at 243 MHz and has 3 MB of embedded GPU memory. Because I have a Wii that is no longer in use, I had the idea to install Linux on it. And at the end I bought a new Wii just for testing purposes. The first Linux kernel that was modified is the 2.6.32 long term support kernel released late 2009 and reached the end of life status in 2016. After some research I found newer 3.x and 4.x kernels that are still supported. I couldn't use the 4.x kernels because they have no support for large SDHC cards added. Now it's time to hack an innocent Wii. If you have boot me and the homebrew channel already installed, you can skip this part of the video. First go to the Wii network settings and click on console information to write down the MAC address. Then download letterbomb from please.hackme.com, type in your MAC address, pass the capture and click on one of the buttons. Extract letterbomb.zip to your SD card, check if all files are copied and then eject it. Now start the Wii, open the message board and open the red letter. This will start the HackMe installer. Install the homebrew channel and boot me. If your Wii can only install boot me as an iOS, because it's a patched one produced after 2008, install it. If you installed boot me at boot 2, it will be launched at startup, otherwise launch the homebrew channel, go to the home menu and click on start boot me. Next I will install Linux. I decided to choose a newer kernel first and prepared the SD card with DD. You can use Etcher as well. I made some custom images for you with different kernels, root file systems and pre-installed stuff like Xorg, an offline package installer and network manager. That saves a lot of time, especially if you have network issues or no network at all. The root partition is only about 400 to 800 megabytes, so you may need to resize it. Creating a swap would be helpful because of the low amount of RAM. This requires a Linux machine with gparted. You can use the command line option as well. Finally, I managed to boot into Debian and started some tests. Lightweight window managers like DWM, Fluxbox and Openbox perform good. The terminal emulator and all command line programs like the browser W3M are also usable. The only game that is playable is SuperTux. It turns out that everything that has a high pixel refresh rate performs pretty badly. In comparison, here's the older kernel with the Xoc Cube driver installed. SuperTux run 12 FPS faster at about 34 FPS. Neither the frame buffer hack in the newer kernel nor the custom driver have support for OpenGL. Here are some benchmarks of the Wii made with hard info.
So in conclusion, there's no reason at all to run Linux on the Wii. But it's fun to play around with. Um, and yeah, the Wii U is a bit different, has more RAM and a decent GPU. But this is for another video. Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to like and subscribe.